Hello, this short video will help you make the most of the formula booklet in your AS Pure Maths exam. We look at the formulas given, some related formulas, and exam questions which illustrate their use. We start with mensuration. Just two formulas are given, that's the surface area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared. You're not given the volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. You're given the area of the curved surface of a cone, pi r l, the slant height. You're not given the volume, one third pi r squared h. The other formulas you need to know are related to a cylinder. The curved surface area of the cylinder is 2 pi r h, so that's a rectangle. That is 2 pi r, the circumference of the base wide and h high and the volume of a cylinder, pi r squared h, area of the base times the height. Typically, the mensuration formulas are used in calculus questions. We're told tablets have a cylindrical shape. The volume of the tablet is 60 millimetres cubed, so pi x squared h equals 60. We rearrange to get h equals 60 over pi x squared. Then we have to get an expression for the surface area of the tablet. So here the area is 2 pi x squared, so that's the top and the bottom circles, plus 2 pi x h, that's the curved surface of the cylinder. We substitute the expression for h and we get surface area equals 2 pi x squared plus 120 over x. We're then asked to use calculus to find the minimum value of this area. So we differentiate A with respect to X. We know at the minimum dA by dx equals zero. We can solve this equation for X and we get X is the cube root of four pi over 120. So that's approximately 0 0.471. To calculate the minimum area of A, we simply substitute that into the expression for A and we get the minimum area as being approximately 256 square millimetres. And to show that it's minimum, we take the second derivative and we show that the second derivative is greater than zero. The next formula is the binomial series. In the expression for the binomial series, they use the column vector form of the NCR notation, which is used on your calculator. Here's an example question. Find the first four terms in ascending powers of x in the binomial expansion of 1 plus kx to the power of 10. Your first job will be to identify the expressions for a, b and n, which are to be substituted into the formula. So here a is 1, b is kx, n is 10. We substitute those directly into the formula. As a is 1, all of the powers of a become 1. I'd recommend your first effort simply replaces the expressions directly into the formula. Second step, we calculate the values of each of the coefficients. We're given in the expansion of 1 plus kx to the power of 10, the coefficient of x cubed is three times the coefficient of x. And we have to find the possible values of k. So here, the coefficient in x is 10k. The coefficient of x cubed is 120k cubed. So we can write this equation which is easily solved to get k is plus or minus a half. We move on to logarithms and exponentials. The first formula given has almost fallen out of use. It's used to change the base of a logarithm. Um, most calculators these days will allow you to calculate the logarithm in any base. We're also told e to the x times ln of a. ln is the natural logarithm, or log to the base e of a, equals a to the x. A more useful formula to have in your mind 
is that a to the power of log to the base a of x equals x. This is really the definition of a logarithm. Log to the base a of x is the power to which you have to raise a to give you the value x. Let's look at a couple of example questions. Solve 5 to the power of x equal to 10. We take log to the base 5 of both sides. Log to the base 5 of 5 to the x will be x. And this gives us x equals log to the base 5 of 10. If your calculator doesn't support log to the base 5 of 10, you can use this first formula here to calculate it in terms of log to the base 10. Either way, you'll get an answer of 1.3. Another example, solve e to the power of 3x minus 9 equals 8. We take the natural logarithm of both sides. So ln of e to the 3x minus 9 is 3x minus 9. That will equal ln of 8, which is ln of 2 cubed, or 3 ln of 2. We divide through by 3 and rearrange to get x equals 3 plus ln of 2. As we're asked for exact solutions, this is exactly the form we leave our answer in, rather than calculate an approximation on our calculator. One last example. Here we have an equation where we have two terms which are log to the base 2 and we have an ordinary number, we want to make everything logs to the base 2 so that we can combine them. So the minus 3 becomes minus log to the base 2 of 2 cubed. So here on the left-hand side, we have log to the base 2 of 2x. Here we're subtracting logs, so this becomes log to the base 2 of 5x plus 4 divided by 2 cubed, or divided by 8. And this gives us that 2x equals 5x plus 4 divided by 8, which we can rearrange to get x equals 4 elevenths. You may be asked to do a simple differentiation from first principles. Here's an example. Prove from first principles that the derivative of 2x squared plus 3 is 4x. So here we're going to set fx equal to 2x squared plus 3. We can then write that f dashed x, the derivative of f of x, is the limit as h tends to 0 of 2x plus h all squared plus 3, that's f of x plus h, minus 2x squared plus 3 divided by h. This is the definition. Notice that the constant terms will always cancel. We expand x plus h all squared, and we simplify the expression to give 4xh plus x squared all over h. So this equals the limit as h tends to 0 of 4x plus h, and clearly as h tends to 0, this will tend to 4x as required. I hope you found that useful and that you'll go on to look at the other videos in this series.